Mr. B here. This is part two of Foundations of Memory. And what we're going to do now, first, the part one was the active high SR latch. This one is active low. Why active low? Bubbles. Bubbles on the inputs. That's why it's called the active low. Uh, the definitions as far as S is set, R is still reset, Q, when Q is a 1, that output Q. By definition, the latch is set. When the Q is a 0, the latch is reset. So, regardless of whether I have active low or active high SR latches, those two conditions, the 0, 1 or the 1, 0 condition, um, are the same. This, the 1, 1 condition, where you're saying, hey, I want to be set and reset at the exact time. If you were a person inside the, the box, the, um, the MSI, if you were inside of there and your job was to either turn on, um, turn on the output to Q or not Q, and if the inputs were saying set, reset, set, reset, set, reset, you go, ah, and what you would do is, oh, I can get rid of that, blue screen, of death. That's what you do. That's their invalid state. Regardless of whether I'm active high or active low, when you're saying set, reset at the same time, it's invalid. Well, the one difference that we'll noodle through in a second is that those values there will change. Um, and what we want to prove is that the zero, zero condition is a hold state. Okay? So that's our goal for this. Uh, let me get rid of my screen there. We're going to slide down. The way to best analyze these is just focus on um, well, what you're doing. You, know, you have active low, so you have the bubbles. And the best way to noodle through this is just think about not S, think about not R, think about inside the box. It makes it a little bit easier to, to um, just noodle through. But in case you know you hadn't really figured out the way you make not S, is you'd put it through an inverter, right? And the same thing, not our put through an inverter, all right? Um, so what we'll do here is we've got to figure out, uh, and I'll show the same thing. I've got S going through an inverter, going to not S. I've got R going through an inverter, really pretty messy. But um, let's figure out uh, a few of the conditions here. Um, if I had set was a 1, so if S was a 1, that means not S would be a 0, and if R was a 0, meaning that not R would be a 1, uh, the question is, okay, so what's going to happen? Um, we'll just pick a value for the upper NAND here. I'll show it in green. Uh, let's say I decide on a 0. Okay, oh, so this is for my NAND gate. I'll make my little... I try not to memorize. I just drop this off to the side and refer to it as I go along when I'm noodling through um, how these how these gates work. Okay, so it's an and, not and. So the and would be uh, zero 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 one. So nan would be just the opposite. It would be uh, um, a zero, and everything else would be a one. All right. So now we're back to our upper left uh, that crossed nand, and I have an, an and gate with the input condition zero zero which means it's going to output a 1. It's going to crank around a 1 to here. And then a 1-1 one, one condition is a 0, which is going to crank around a 0. And hey, I picked right for, the, for once. Um, and so that tells me then when set was a 1, in other words, not S was a 0, what that means is I now know where Q is. Q is right here. That's that output, and that's not Q. All right. I remember when when I have my switch set, I want my output Q to be a one. That's by the definitions. And so we'll just go through, and I'll quickly label all these guys. Um, you were given the labels on your sheet, and I just like to make my make my my life harder on myself. Okay, so I've got not S, not R. I have Q, not Q, Q, not Q. All right, so everything's labeled. I figured out those labels by just knowing a true table of, uh, of an AND gate, really. Okay, so let's look at the, the whole condition. The whole condition is when S and R are both zeros, right? Well, let's, let's first of all just look at it like this. Like 
that um, you had S as a 1. We're going to just take the condition that we noodle through on the left. And so I'll just copy down whatever states it happened to have, which was a 0, 1, a 1 there. You had a 1 here, and you had a 0, 0 there, all right? And so now the, the situation is, all right, I'm going to shut switch S off. So in other words, S and R, the 0, 0 condition, is this going to hold the outputs as um, Q being a 1 and not Q being a 0? Well, let's find out. <clears throat> so now that uh, not S is going to become a 1, so I'm going to erase that red 0 and put it with a 1. And um, so now the 1, 0 condition is going to output a 1. Hey, that's what I had. That cranks around, leaves the 1 as it was. A 1, 1 condition on that other NAND is a 0. So yes, in fact, it did hold. So it held it. So we've just proven that when not S and not R, not, this is not S and not R. So that's, I'm going to look down my truth table and circle where I'm at. I'm at that condition right there, right? So that's when S and R is 0, 0. We've proven that that is our no change, no change. That's our hold, also called latch, it's latching on to information. Um, we've proven, uh, well, we'll prove here in a cell. We did prove the upper left-hand corner when we had S set at 1 and R set at 0. And when we invert them, well, we did prove that that was the set condition. Uh, and what we'll do right now, I'm going to write it down. We're going to prove this in two seconds, the reset condition. All right, so let's, let's prove the reset condition where what I would have is just the opposite of above. I'm going to have a 1 here and a 0 there. Okay, I'll pick a value. This time I'll, I'm going to pick a 1 there. I don't know. I'm living life on the edge. A 1, 1 condition would I'll put a 0. Cranks around a 0 to here. A 0, 0 condition cranks out a 1. Brings around a 1. I got lucky again. I'm, I'm doing really good right now. All right, so now when I have not S at a 1, I'm looking at my truth table, and I have not R at a 0, that gives me the reset condition. And sure enough, we saw that Q was a 0, so we've proven that. Let's just verify that the whole condition would work. If I, if I had that, that state and I decided to, um, to go to a whole condition... So I'm just going to copy over the values that I had, which was a 1, a 1, a 0, a 0, and um, we had a 1, a 1 there, okay? And so now if we went to our whole condition, was, which is where S, not S, and not R are both 1s, so I'm going to make not R into a 1. All right. Oh, I forgot to carry that zero over. Okay, so now not S and R are both ones. In other words, S and R are both off. A one zero condition on the bottom gate. I'm looking there. One zero condition would output a one. It still was a one. A one one is a zero, and sure enough, that held it. Okay. So we've proven without without a doubt that um, this uh, condition. Looking at the truth table here, the zero zero condition for S and R or and not S, not R, being 1, 1, that there definitely is a whole condition. We've got one last condition to verify, and that would be this invalid condition. The invalid condition would be when uh, not S and, well, when S is a 1 and R is a 1. Well, if they're going through inverters, we'd be at the 0, 0 condition, right? Okay, well, pick a value. I've been doing pretty good. I'm going to try a 1. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens here. Okay, 0, 1 condition. That's going to output a 1. That's going to crank around a 1. A 0, 1 condition there would output a 1. And man, I've been, yeah, this is the best I've ever done on these. And that would crank around a 1, which is what I guessed at and happened to guess right. What you notice here is that Q and not Q are both 1s, okay? Uh, and that would be where S and R were both on. And so that's our invalid. Okay, and we don't like invalid, but it happens. Um, and what I want to do now is let's do a quick comparison of the two that we, we've 
played with here. We've played with an active high and an active low. I've got the, the bubble diagram, or not bubble diagrams, the um, MSI block diagrams right here, active low, active high. We've got our truth tables. Let's do a little comparison here. So the best way to visualize this is on the active low where I've got the not S and not R. You just cover that up with your finger on your paper. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to scratch it out in black. All right, let's just, if we just ignore that, because when you're running your circuit, you're just looking at those inputs. If I have S high, I want my output Q to be a 1, and if R being low, that is. Um, well, let's just do a comparison of true tables now. When I have S and R, a zero zero condition, S and R zero zero condition, they were both hold or latch, whether it was active low or active high. Well, that's cool. What about when I have the zero one condition? Regardless of active low or active high, they're both three set condition. Sweet. What about uh, the one zero condition? The one zero condition, they're both set. That's cool. And at one one, they're both invalid. The biggest difference is what happens to Q. On one one active high, both outputs turn low. On the active low, both outputs were a one. Uh, a minor difference. We don't like the invalid conditions. We're gonna work it, uh, work a way around that, um, and then the future videos. These two uh, active high and active low latches are really fundamental but very important that you can derive the truth tables and understand it. Um, it's really the key thing. Can you understand it? Uh, everything's going to build off of these. And your, how your microwave can remember what time it is, how your alarm clock can remember what time it is, how your watch can remember what time it is, all really are built in the fundamentals on the SR latches um, with some twists that we're going to throw on the next lesson, which will be lesson three. That's coming up. Um, so uh, I've talked enough. Thank you very much. Have a good day.